quizos. So, but before we do that, it's really, really important that we understand what the question that comes up with this is, find the value that makes the function continuous. And if you guys look at this, you can see that we have a function that is defined with a domain restriction. We have another function, though, we don't know what this value c is. So c is going to represent a constant, really meaning any number, any real number that we can determine. So the main thing is, to kind of wrap our head around this, let's just graph 1 half x minus 3. Because we at least understand that we can graph that 1, 2, 3, up 1 over 2. And that's going to be for all values that are less than 0, right? So if we were to graph that line, it's going to be an open circle here, and then all less than 0. So we're not going to graph the positive version. Are we OK at least with that? That's what we started with in the last class period and we built on today, right? Now, the next one is we have negative x. Now we need to find the value c. Now, I'm not really sure what c could be. So let me just pretend c is 0. And let's just graph negative x. y equals negative x, right? Let's just graph y equals negative x for x values that are greater than 0. So if, it, if c was 0, then it go down, um, down 1 over 1. And the graph would look like this. Okay. So again, what we're trying to do, at least you guys can visually look at this, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take, so basically whatever this y coordinate is, that's going to shift the graph up or down, right? C is basically going to shift the graph down up, up or down. And hopefully you guys can see then, what number do we want C to be? We want it to be negative 3, because when it comes down to negative 3, it fills in that hole, right? So we want not it to be 0, we want it to be negative 3, plus a negative 3 or minus 3. When you, I'm going to show you how to find out. But I want you to see, if this is at negative x plus 0, the graph is right there. But if I do negative x minus 3, then I'm shifting it 3 units down. Now the function is continuous. Because that's the idea. I want to find the value c that makes the function continuous. Now, without talking to your neighbor, there's a couple important things that are going on here. I want you guys to understand, if we're trying to find the value c that makes this function continuous, there's something that's really, really important they are sharing this common point. Now, obviously, only one of them is defined for the function for that point, but they are sharing a x and a y. Now, what we talked about in the last examples is if it, if it is going to be continuous or discontinuous, it's going to be discontinuous or continuous at x equals 0. right? Remember when we talked about that? We looked at all the discontinuities, and they all were where these domain restrictions were. Right? So we want it to be continuous at x equals 0. We don't want to say, oh, we, don't want it. we want them to be continuous at like 1 or 5, because that doesn't make sense. It's, they're going to be continuous or discontinuous when x equals 0. Now, if we want it to be continuous, they're going to have the same x value. But if they're going to have the same point, that means they have to have the same x and y value. So how do we mathematically represent them having the same y value? Yes? Right, you can just set the two equations equal to each other. And that kind of goes back to, if you guys remember in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, systems of equations. Set the y's equal to each other to solve for x. Right? And then you can, you can do substitution that way. So either way, what I can do algebraically, this is the graphical approach, which hopefully you guys look at these other examples and say, eh, I'm not really sure if I want to graph the rest of them. Right? So we need to algebraically, what we can do is set the equations equal to each other. And then we want these equations to be equal to each other when x is equal to 0. So then we just say at x equals 0, just replace the x's with 0. Oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be a c. When you simplify this, you get negative 3 equals c. And was that the answer that we graphically, visually saw? Yes. Okay. So that's basically the process you guys are going to use. Some equations you can graph them. Some equations are not easily graphed. Yes. Uh, 